to answer any questions you may have for those of you unfamiliar with my work. Every year I read through every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I then compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, the most practical finding into new videos and articles that I upload nearly every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. All right, I'm excited uh, to come to you uh, via this new cool software, which Chef AJ told me about, actually, um, which allows me to stream to multiple sites directly. So normally I do, uh, you know, I'd be on Facebook Live and then I do a YouTube Live thing. Well, now I can do them both together. So you can be watching right now on Facebook or on YouTube and answer questions. And then it compiles all the questions and it gives them to me. And so then I can answer questions for everybody. I'm all excited about it. Hopefully it'll work. Um, uh, but, uh, so let's just, oh, let me see. Um, terms of announcements. Oh, if for those of you, check this out. This, uh, for those of you who have been getting the newsletter, which is free, of course, like everything else in nutritionvax.org, you will know there's a couple of cool announcements coming up. I'm going to be doing a lot, an extra live Q and a for 45 minutes next month with the plant-based dietitian herself, Juliana Hever. Um, we're going to do it together, kind of the, di the, the dietitian and the doctor together to answer your questions as to the whys and the hows of eating uh, evidence-based. And that will be, for those of you who did not get the newsletter date because you're not subscribed, that will be on August 17th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope you'll join us for the first time. Oh, we're going to do it on Instagram. It's an Instagram Live thing. So you got to be either on her Instagram or my Instagram. I I, we're all excited about it. We tested it out this morning, um, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, also, I have a new webinar coming up, and that will be on August 26th. Um, I'm talking about uh, plant-based meats and cultivated meat. Um, uh, what about the human health implications? Yes, it's, you know, can have environmental benefits and pandemic prevention benefits. But no, but what about the human health effects, the nutritional um, aspects of something like, uh, you know, like Beyond Meat or the Impossible Burger. Um, I get a lot of questions about that. So, oh, I came up with a, I don't know how many hours it's going to be. Two hours, three hours, something like that. Oh, it's probably in the, it's probably in the newsletter I sent out today. Uh, so make sure to check it out. Um, and then, oh, and then my new book. Do I have a new book thing? I don't think I have a new book thing. Uh, I have a new book coming out. Um, no, well, this is the new book, um, uh, The How to Survive a Pandemic. It's out on ebook and audiobook, but it'll be out on actual physical copies for those old schoolers out there who actually like to hold books and flip pages and stuff and get paper cuts. Uh, August 18th, I believe. Uh, yes, August 18th. It'll be out, and you can pre-order now if you would like. Okay, let's get to your questions, which is why we are all here today. Um, what does it say? Oh, what, what happens? Oh, can I actually show the question? Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, my God, check it out. I can actually show the question. Oh, well, it only shows the beginning of the question. But anyway, uh, Chrissy asks, I realize the importance of vitamin B12 for health benefits in general. I've been taking it. Oh, for neuropathies. Well, I'm a 35-year-old woman with breast cancer. Um, and she talks about some details about her breast cancer. Blah, 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 blah. Um, now, okay, so she is asking about a specific study um, uh, that, uh, um, so since this is uh, um, a, a specific study in the Journal of Clinical Oncology about her specific uh, breast cancer, and what I would, um, I will have her email me, um, go to the way, go to nutritionfacts.org um, and you can contact me and, uh, and, and I will answer your question specifically just because it is so specific. All right. So let me go on to the next question. Patty says, well, I love how you can put them on the screen. This is so cool. Um, would I take the COVID vaccine, any vaccine that would be approved um, uh, by the Food and Drug Administration, I would s expect to um, uh, only be approved, um, even in this uh, current administration, 
I would assume it would be uh, tested for efficacy and for safety and would, um, uh, I, I was going to say I'd be the first in line, but no, I would not be the first in line. It'd be frontline medical workers, et cetera. But I would certainly um, uh, get the vaccine so as to not um, put others at risk as well as myself. Okay, Bobby says hello. Melissa says hello. Angelina, what can I do to get involved as a high score? That is so awesome, Angelina. Um, what you can do is you can figure a way to, you can figure out how best to, uh, to, to align your life um, and your career um, with making the world a better place. And what I would recommend is this amazing website uh, called 80,000 Hours. I believe 80,000hours.org. So that's the numbers, 80000hours.org. Um, uh, so 80,000 hours is about the time that we spend in a, in a job um, in our life. And the question is, what do you do with those 80,000 80, hours? Um, and they have wonderful books and resources and um, can really uh, you know, help find the best ways to utilize your talents to make the world a better place. Okay, Rose says, good morning. Good morning, Rose. Um, hello, Vegan Sarah. Um, uh, Melissa says, what protein powder do I recommend, in, uh, if any? And uh, just to note, I'm doing these in order. They order show up in my thing. I'm not skipping any. Um, and so if you're in the list somewhere, I will eventually get to you um, if I have time. I do not recommend any protein powder. That's like saying, what kind of fat do you recommend or what kind of sugar do you recommend? No, you want to get all your macronutrients in whole food form. Um, and so where, where do I get my protein? I get my protein inside legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, and whole grains, and nuts and seeds, and blah, 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 and on the list. Um, just like where do you get your carbohydrates from? You get them from whole foods um, by eating a piece of fruit, not taking – like protein powder is the equivalent of I need my carbs, so I'm going to eat a tablespoon of sugar. Why would you do that? Um, uh, yeah, why don't you get your protein um, the way we should get all of our uh, macronutrients from whole, healthy plant foods? Okay. Um, uh, wow. Well, uh, Alexi loves the beard. That's nice. This, and this is my pandemic haircut. I got to get a trim somehow. Um, okay. Um, uh, sarcoma. Oh, that's asking, responding to somebody else. Um, Dr. Greger says, data assassin. Is it okay to eat whole flaxseed? It is, but you just won't get the benefit beyond laxation, meaning uh, it'll help you uh, with bowel movements. Um, so it'll still do that because it still gets kind of muc mucusy um, and can bulk up your stool, but you actually don't get the omega-3s and lignans and all the wonderful things you want inside. So I encourage people. Um, so my daily dozen checklist of all the healthiest healthy foods I recommend I not only recommend a tablespoon of flax seeds, specifically a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, so you can get it all the goodies inside. All right. I am just going to, now they're scrolling up so quickly, I actually can't go in order. So I'm just going to click randomly, um, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, uh, Tony asks, how low do I need to get my LDL to reverse heart disease? Oh, fantastic question. Okay. So for primary prevention, meaning you don't have heart disease, you're trying to prevent um, heart disease, you don't have known heart disease, then getting your LDL down to 70 should be sufficient. However, secondary prevention, meaning you already have heart disease, you're trying to reverse it, that's really, we need to push it down um, uh, in the 30 to 50 range. That means you have to eat an exceedingly healthy diet. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Charmaine says, can I explain? Oh, why you recommend cyanocobalamin versus methylcobalamin? I just did a webinar. For those of you who missed it, a uh, two-hour webinar on the latest in B12 research. All those videos are going to be up online. But if you missed the webinar, you can actually get the whole thing downloaded, all the videos downloaded. Um, uh, uh, um, so that that be, or you can just wait and it'll pop up. Um, but, but bottom line, a stability and efficacy. So cyanocobalamin is more shelf stable. Um, doesn't photo decompose um, and uh, actually been shown to be more efficacious and is what's recommended um, by the experts in the field. And I go through all the data and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, Conrad says, what advice do I give someone trying to gain weight but struggling with a low appetite? 
Well, then if you're not going to eat a lot, then all, every one of those bites, you need to pack as many calories as possible. Um, and so calorie dense foods, calorie dense healthy foods include nuts, seeds, nut butter, seed butters, um, avocado, um, uh, dried fruit. So like a trail mix, frequent eating, particularly if you can't, if you get uh, full too quickly, well, if you just eat smaller frequent meals throughout the day, so something like trail mix, concentrated, um, uh, concentrated source of calories, smoothies. Often uh, people, uh, you can drink a lot more. Like if I said, eat all these fruits and vegetables, you'd be like, oh, but drink this much fruits and vegetables. It just kind of may go down easier. So you can try that. Okay, random quite Okay. I don't know what that means. Okay, Tommy says, is there any new oh, information on Raynaud's? Um, uh, not that I have seen, but it's not something I've actively looked under. If you go to PubMed um, and see any new articles, I'd be happy to check it out for you. Eczema and asthma, any new research in this area in relation to plain TPA, DHA? Uh, not that I know of, but I've got a bunch of videos on eczema, asthma, eczema and asthma. Say that five times fast on nutritionfacts.org. All right. Uh, that didn't show up. There we go. A Universal Earthwing says warp speed liability free vaccine without using new untested technologies. There's no... Uh, okay. Unfortunately, I can't see the rest of that because it scrolled up way too fast and just kind of disappeared. Is there any way to... No, I can't get past those. Huh. All right. Okay. So I guess I can only click on short questions. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, are you, uh, Sarah is surprised that I'm pro-vaccine. Are you surprised that I am pro no more smallpox on the planet Earth? Hundreds of millions of people used to suffer and die from this scourge called smallpox banished from the face of the Earth. Why? Because of the greatest medical discovery in human history, the vaccine. Um, I have, says, a bit confused by a note. Oh, that's not going to help because I can't see the rest of the question. Okay, um, what about this one? Um, Jamie says, I'm always hungry when I eat a whole food plant-based diet. That's can't stick to it. How can I overcome this, please? Um, well, you have to need enough calories. So one of the, one of the um, uh, common uh, problems people transitioning to eating healthy is they're used to eating a certain quantity of food, uh, meaning, you know, they look down at a plate and like this what supper is. Supper is like this mound of food. You can't eat the same amount of food when you're all of a sudden eating healthy food. It tends to be so much more calorically diluted. You have to eat more food. So if you don't eat enough, so if you eat the same quantity of food, like the same volume of food, the same weight of food, of course you're going to end up hungry. If you actually do calorie counts on people, they're like, no, no, I eat enough. I mean, I, I, I eat a whole bunch of food. But if you actually do calorie counts, oh my God, you're getting like 800 calories a day. You're eating a starvation diet. You got to eat more food. Um, so, uh, so um, I, uh, so I mean, you can all these calorie counters online, you can make sure you're actually getting sufficient calories uh, for how much you're burning in a day. And no wonder you are getting um, uh, not enough satiety. So um, wet starches is a great way. So, um, you know, uh, sweet potatoes and whole intact grains um, uh, have uh, enough caloric density to um, uh, to maintain long-term satiety. And of course, I have a whole chapter um, on satiety in my second to last book, How Not to to diet. All right. Uh, what do I recommend for psoriasis? I recommend you check out my videos on psoriasis on nutritionfacts.org. Any tips to beat fibromyalgia? Uh, again, I've got videos on that as well. Um, what about amino acid supplements to replace protein powder and meat? You don't need amino acid supplements. You can get all the amino acids, which are found. Every single essential amino acid in the world is found in every single plant food. Right. In fact, that's where essential amino acids come from. The amino acid, the essential amino acids in a steak came from the plants they ate. Amino acids come from the ground. Right. They come from either uh, uh, microorganisms or from uh, or from plants. Animals do not make essential. In fact, that's why they're essential. They're called essential amino acids because we can't make them. The cows can't make them either. They have to get them from plants. We can cut out the middle moo, going straight to plants. Get all the amino acids we need. Um, we don't need protein powders. We don't need amino acid supplements. All right. Okay. Um, what are my feelings on IBS and a plant-based diet? Um, I do have a bunch of videos on IBS, but I have even more coming out um, as part of a whole SIBO, um, a small intestinal bowel 
um, uh, um, uh, overgrowth syndrome uh, um, videos uh, coming up soon in nutritionfacts.org. So uh, check it out. Uh, best foods to diverticular disease, high fiber foods. Diverticula, uh, these out pouchings in the colon are caused by excessive pressure straining on stool. So how do you not strain on stool? You bulk up your stool with some um, um, high fiber foods, um, which are um, plant foods in general, whole plant foods in general, but specifically legumes and whole intact grains have the most um, per serving just because they're drier. Uh, a lot of people think, well, I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I get all the fiber I need. No, you know, fruits and vegetables are their water, right? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, 80% of, uh, of, uh, of fruits and up to 90% of some vegetables is just all water. I mean, they're super healthy food, they have tons of nutrition, but it's actually not a lot of fiber. You got to go to some of the drier foods like whole grains and legumes. Okay. I saw a watermelon. Is eating half a large watermelon a day unhealthy? It is delicious. Um, even more so if you can find seeded watermelons. Um, uh, and uh, well, let me see. Over the last seven days, I've eaten three watermelons. And so that is a half a day. So I'm in the same boat as you. Um, and it is a delicious boat to be in. All right. Oh, that's too long of a question. Sorry. Right. Is carbonation okay? I actually some videos about um, the benefits of, uh, of carbonated water. Um, so check those out. Um, however, carbonated sugar water, i.e. soda, not a good idea. Okay, what is my opinion on textured vegetable protein or protein isolates? Oh, how cool. This is not a plant. Ha, ah, but that's funny. It's about plants. Um, no, but that is a perfect, actually, that's part of my, um, webinar on the 26th of August. Um, talk about plant-based meat alternatives. A lot of them are made out. So for example, Impossible um, Burger is made from a soy isolate. Um, Beyond Burger is made from a pea isolate. Um, and so what about the healthfulness of these plant protein isolates? Um, and so I'll, I did a whole video on it. And that video is going to be part of my webinar next um, month. And then, of course, it'll be um, uh, free online eventually at nutritionfacts.org, but check it out. I was excited to look into that question. And even better, I was surprised by what I found. Ha! I love when that happens. Okay. So new data on hibiscus? Um, I, uh, may, I'm sure there is. Um, uh, I, am, uh, I go through the alphabet, basically. That's how I, I cycle through the alphabet. Right now, I'm in the peas, so I just did processed meat and protein um, and potatoes. Um, it'll be a while before I get to zucchini, but to get back to H will be even longer. So, um, but uh, you can, you can do it yourself by going to uh, uh, PubMed. That's the uh, the database, the largest uh, uh, um, medical library in the world, and you can type in hibiscus and see what pops up, and you can do it by recent date. Um, and so you can basically look at every single video that's been published since my last video on hibiscus and uh, see how good it is for you these days. All right, latest on, oh, diet AFib and ablation. The only thing I think that's popped up in the dietary literature on AFib is on caffeine. I think it's the only thing I have on nutrition facts. Of course, ablation is a surgical topic, which I do not cover. Can you, oh my God, I would love to go on uh, Michael Moore's podcast, The Rumble. Um, uh, 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 that is, I only subscribe, I think, to about six podcasts, and that's one of them. I'm uh, a big fan of Michael Moore. In fact, I was um, uh, so excited to meet him. We were speaking at like a uh, New York City NPR uh, 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 the, the studio. Um, and we were, and it's funny, I was working at my laptop and he was like sitting right next to me this whole time. And then all of a sudden he talked to somebody. I was like, what? I know that voice looked up and there he was. I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, Michael Moore, I'm a huge fan of your work. And, uh, and, and to my teary eyed surprise, he was like, Michael Greger, I'm a big fan of your work. I'm, I'm reading your how not to die right now. I'm like, oh my God, he knows who I am. That was very fun. Anyway, so we are mutual fans. Um, and yeah, I'd love to get on this podcast. That'd be amazing. Anyway, 
Okay, what else we got? What? Oh, what? Oh my! It hurts just to look at this question. Um, what causes a condition like frozen sh shoulder? Um, usually some kind of overexertion. Um, uh, I actually had a frozen shoulder once. It was horrible. Um, I lifted a treadmill, and I should not have lifted that treadmill. Um, and uh, it's interesting. The body realizes that you overexerted yourself. I mean, so, you know, like muscle soreness, that's when your body's um, uh, kind of signals to yourself that, that soreness you feel the next day. You're like, oh, maybe I overdid it a little bit. Frozen shoulders beyond that because um, you lose the, uh, you know, you lose your arms. You, um, that's, a, that's, that's a bad thing um, in terms of our um, uh, means of survival. And so when you overexert um, uh, your shoulder joint, your body does not take kindly to it and can actually lock it up, freeze it up. It's almost like an autoimmune reaction where it just kind of gums up um, uh, and locks your shoulder in place. Why? So you won't do it again. Um, uh, uh, and um, thankfully it goes away, um, but it can take six months or longer to go away. Um, you can get steroid injections, um, which can help with the pain, but doesn't actually make it um, get better any quicker. Um, and in fact, you really don't want to do more than one or two. Um, injections again, it's only symptomatic relief. Um, and so how do you deal with it? You don't, you, you, you take care of yourself and don't, um, uh, lift something that's way too heavy. Okay. Um, large sack of skin asks how much nitrate does green tea hibiscus kale provide? Uh, none in uh, green tea hibiscus as far as I know, or, you know, vanishingly small amounts, but kale, where do we get our nitrate from? Nitrate containing vegetables, dark green leafies and beets. In fact, the whole beet plant. So beet, beet greens, of course, that's another green. Um, beet root, um, beet juice. Um, but the most concentrated source is actually arugula, top of the list. But kale's on there too. And there's lots of benefits from eating nitrate containing vegetables. One of the reasons why dark green leafy vegetables are on my daily dozen for something to try to fit into your daily diet. I actually have a video where I go through the list of all the top nitrate-containing foods. So check it out if you are interested. All right. Best way to lose weight, gain muscle. At the same time, I've got a book for you. It's called How Not to Diet. Um, and that's the best way to lose weight. How do you gain muscle? You do resistance exercise. Okay, Katrina. Uh, that must Katrina looks like she's answering somebody else. Some, um, um, Amarnith. Um, uh, says, um, uh, what's the best source of plant, plant-based bile salt? I don't know, not know what that means. I mean, you can, there's like bare bile supplements, but your body makes bile. Um, and so you don't need to take any bile. Your body will make it for you. Okay. When checking out, um, Teresa says, checking out my daily dozen, do I count my soy milk as a bean serving? I know. Whoa. Oh my God. I almost fell off the back of my treadmill. Woo. Um, ha. Okay. Uh, speaking of shoulders and accidents, um, do no, you don't. Why? Cause daily dozen is just for green light foods. Everything the daily dozen is green light food. Um, uh, soy milk is a yellow light food. Why? Because it has something bad added or something good taken away. What's good been taken away. Uh, taking away a lot, you take cold uh, soybeans, you move fiber, um, and then you add salt and sugar. Um, so if you are going to do soy milk, at least you can get one with uh, out added sugar. Um, but nope, doesn't count for bean serving because it's had lots of its beanness removed from it. It's certainly the healthiest type of uh, milk out there, unsweetened soy. But um, even better is to eat whole soy foods like edamame, the immature green soybeans. You can freshly grab pepperum black pepper them and eat them out of the pods. Kids have a lot of fun um, eating that way. Tempeh is whole soy. In fact, I just had tempeh for lunch. Um, uh, uh, tempeh is a whole soy food. I don't know. All right. Lots of yummy ways to get whole soy foods. Soy foods. Okay. It's funny. They're scrolling up so quickly. It's like, I feel like uh, I'm on one of those game shows, like no whammies, no whammies. Just click a button and poof, a question pops up. Uh, can I, someone do the AIP diet? I have no idea what the AIP diet is. Um, X Catherine, please write in again and tell me what that means. Shipa, Shilpa, Shilpa says popcorn made at home. Okay, it depends how you make it. 
Are you making it by popping it in oil? Um, then that is not the ideal way to eat it. But air pop popcorn, it not only is okay, but it is delicious. Um, and I was about to say, I just had some popcorn, but I actually didn't. I wanted to have popcorn, but I realized I packed my popper because I'm moving out of Philadelphia. I'm going to be only in here in Philadelphia for another uh, 10 days or so. And then I'm moving. So my I would have eaten popcorn, but my popcorn popper is packed. How's that? for a, say that five times five, fast. Okay, okay, another button. What do I think of using, oh, um, uh, Joss asks, what do you think of using slippery elm to aid in GI inflammation? I use slippery elm for my throat um, when I speak too much, um, and it's very soothing to the throat, but I don't know about the rest of the GI tract. It's not something I've looked into. Okay, um, I don't know what PEMF is. Carla says, is it possible to mono eat healthful foods like flax? Like, you can't just eat flax seeds. That seems silly to me. Um, uh, well, yeah, if you ate too much flax, you could run into problems. But, yeah. Uh, but it's probably not a good idea to eat one of a uh, single food of any kind of food. Diversity is important. Okay. Dr. Gregor, spelled with an O-R. I don't know exactly who you're addressing, but I will take the question anyway. I have nuts and nut butters every day. Should I be worried about the high? No. Oh, oxalate contents. I don't, well, it depends how much you eat. So I have uh, videos on oxalates, and I believe it was like a cup of almonds. Ooh, don't quote me on that. Look at the video. Uh, quote the video. That's fine. But I think uh, uh, as long as you stay under like a cup a day, you are fine in terms of oxalate content. Okay, have I heard about the NFL diet or is that the NFI diet? I have not. Either way, I've not heard of it. Um, uh, uh, Fran says, or Franz, uh, Reese feeling spacey after eating watermelon. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe it could be a blood sugar thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, do you get spacey after, like if you drank fruit juice? and you had the same spacey feeling, I would assume that uh, their blood sugars are just going up too quick, in which case you can eat your watermelon more slowly and see if that helps. Unless you want that spacey feeling, in which case, eat your watermelon. Uh, you asked how to restore a microbiome of a C-section toddler. Oh, oh, fantastic. Such a, uh, I can't see the rest of this question, but uh, is it up already? Um. Uh, okay, I've done the video. I just don't know if it's up or yet. Up or not, right? I have a new book I'm working on um, uh, starting next year, um, uh, uh, How Not to Age, which will be out December 2022. And so I'm spending the rest of this year buffering out um, a whole year's worth of videos. Um, and so I'm not sure which batch this fell into. But um, uh, if you go to Nutrition Facts and type in vaginal seeding, I think that's the term that was used. Um, where, uh, so basically a C-section baby acquires the microbiome of the surgical suite, like operating room bacteria, as opposed to vaginal flora, which is the normal uh, way gut flora is supposed to start. And so someone had the brilliant idea, well, wait a second. Um, if they just need vaginal flora, why not um, just take all the vaginal flora you want and swab the mouth and face of babes um, uh, and of course there's, um, public health concerns about STDs, etc. Um, but, um, but I talk about the available data, um, suggesting that it is a, um, uh, a relatively safe and effective way to establish a good microbiome in a C-section kid. And unfortunately I have got to go, oh my God, there's so many wonderful questions coming in, but remember I have an extra Q and A next month and it won't just be me but one of my favorite dietitians, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, uh, Julian Hever, the plant-based uh, dietitian. We're going to be doing a dual Instagram live kind of thing. Um, again, that will be on 3 p.m. on August 19th. I will see you all then. Have a wonderful, safe day. Okay, now how do 